So continuing straight on from the last video, um, we pretty much have all the controls and everything set up for this character. Um, let's turn off wireframe and show just the control curves and the mesh so we can see the uh, the rig easier. Uh, but we now have we have a master control. We can place the rig whatever we like in the scene. We have all the animation controls that are working. But if you try and animate with this, you might run into the dreaded gimbal lock. Now for anyone who doesn't know what gimbal locking is, if we select the control, hit E, and go to gimbal, this shows exactly what is in the channel box. So if we rotate on the Z, everything uh, rotates fine. The X and Y follow and just the Z update. But if we, we rotate in the X, you'll see the uh, the Z and the Y don't follow, they're, they're left behind. And what's worse is if we rotate in the Y, the X comes along and the Z is left behind. Which means if you rotate 90 degrees, we now have two axes on top of each other and you wouldn't be able to rotate him sideways. Of course if you switch to local, you can, but this now updates all three axes in the channel box and Maya is just compensating for the lack of the real axis. So if you were to do this in animation, you might find some strange flipping or weird motion in which, which you weren't expecting. So unfortunately there's no real way to fix this, uh, but you can lessen the effect. If we open up the attribute editor, and on the transform node you can see this rotate order attribute, and it defaults to x, y, z. Now that is the order that it's uh, the x, y, z are calculated in, which is why if we go back to gimbal, and rotate in the z, because it's last in the list, the other two come along. Whereas X is first in the list, and so that one leaves behind the Z and the Y. And of course, the Y, it brings along the X. So, what this means is you can set your controls to gimbal lock on the least used access, or least important. So, for this one, the main control, um, you're probably going to want your character to be able to rotate and face different directions more, it's probably more important than leaning left and right, which won't necessarily go all the way around. Uh, forward is forward and back is probably more important than left and right. So I would set it to, let's try ZXY. So now I know if I run around in circles, everything's going to follow. And if I bend forward and backwards, the Z will come so I can do it in sideways, it leaves everything behind. So with that setup, I am less likely to gimbal lock while animating. In fact, ZXY is what I set most of my IK controls to. So I'm going to do the same for the foot. And the hands. Um, even though they're in T-pose, if you set it to ZXY and then rotate down into you know, a more natural position. See nothing moves, so it's still gonna have the same the same sort of setup as the foot. So I'm gonna also set both of those to ZXY. And the same for the head, as you're more likely to want to rotate in the Y than any other direction. Okay, so that's about it for this rig. You should have all the controls needed to make some great animations. There are still a few things that could be added or improved on, uh, like IK forward case snapping for the arms and legs, perhaps some extra prop controls for picking up, picking up objects, swinging swords and things, but it's a good starting point for a bipedal rig. However, this is a low poly game character and the rig is way too complicated to get into a game engine. So to get around that, we need to use a mail script. So here's my goblin base jog animation. See this is my game rig so it's got a few extra controls, uh, mainly for the sword, he's got a loincloth, 
but it's, uh, it's pretty much exactly the same as the rig we just created. So to get this into a game engine, we need we also need a low rare, sorry a um, 4K only version of the rig, which is basically basically the rig before we added any controls after we had created the skeleton, painted the weights, um, save off a copy. Because this is the version we want in the game engine, just just the joints and it's got the meshes, so it's got my extra sword mesh. So if we go back to the animation, uh, the other important thing is uh, before animating this character was referenced in and he needs a namespace so you get the colon in all the control names. The script uses this colon to work out the, the names and removes the prefix or anything before the colon. So once it's referenced and you've done some call animation to uh, to export it, the script is called import export rig and you pass in the start and end frames of the animation or you can put in minus one minus one and it will take the time slider and if we run that it will ask you for the forward k only position or the export rig so we can find that and click open then it brings in the rig and lines everything up and copies the animation across so we now have two versions of the rig in here I may need to do this so you can scrub and just, just check it all converted and came in correctly and if it did you can open up the reference editor and unload the reference You can see now we're left with just the game version. Yeah. And it copied all the animation across to it. So at this point, depending on your game engine, you can export. I've been using Unity, so I would just select everything and I've been using the FBX format. F export selected FBX and it should load into a game engine fine oh, I should have mentioned before running the script you need to select one of the controls in the character this way the script knows which character you want to export and convert so this allows you to have multiple characters in an animation scene and then you can just select one of them and export the one you want I think that's about it for this character. I will put a link in the description of the video so you can download the script. Um, yeah, thanks for watching.